So how do you feel now? Good. Yeah, you feel good? <laughs> sure about that? Yeah. I mean, statistically, statistically speaking, 10% uh, of you would have diabetes. 20% would have hepatitis, uh, herpes. About 0.3% will develop some sort of cancer. And 15% of you will experience very, very painful migraine. That's more than half the room. So, you still feeling okay? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I'm going to show you, because there's so much knowledge, because there's so much knowledge about sickness and illnesses here, I'm going to show you a chart you probably are familiar with. This is a, this is a migraine attack. It's a normal migraine attack. Uh, migraine is a complex neurological condition uh, that is um, characterized by frequent and very, very painful headaches that can last between 4 and 72 hours. That's a very, very long time, and it's very, very painful. Now, most people experience or suffer what's called episodic uh, migraine, which is migraine that comes and goes, basically. Now, by the time you recognize a symptom or several symptoms marked by an X, you are already on the roller coaster. I mean, you are locked in and you've left the platform. So you can, or you can take your medicine, uh, or if medicine doesn't take well with you, you can drink water, hide under a blanket, or whatever is your recipe. But you're on the roller coaster. So the question is, what would happen if we could change that curve, you know, to change the course. What if we could choose not to get on the roller coaster just before it's about to leave the platform? Well, we would have to know something we don't know. We will have to know before we know. And to know before we know, we have to know the factors, let's say the pattern that goes in, into the buildup of your, of your uh, migraine attack. Because if it was a single factor, that led to migraine, it would be easy. But unfortunately, it isn't. Like many other diseases, migraine is triggered by a multiple set of factors, by a multiple set of factors, and in multiple ways. That makes it really, really hard to come up with a standardized diagnosis, and really, really hard to come up with a standardized treatment. It's a very, very individual disease. Now, if we were to help you with your individual disease, we would have to know the exact individual factors that lead up, that makes the pattern, that leads up to your migraine attack. You might not even know all those factors, and your physician certainly does not know all those factors that lead up to your migraine attack. But you kind of know, we kind of do. Every day, you give out so much information about your health, that can be picked up by a smart app on your smartphone. And these are just some of the biomarkers that we're using. Hydration level, physical activity, sleep quality, hormonal change, mood, the effect on the environment is having on you, and voice. And just to show you how rich this can be, voice. Now, there are building blocks, there are uh, uh, there are things to be recognized, attributes, and there are uh, sentiments that can be picked up, emotions. Not as lists as you see, but as a pattern, as a tapestry of the normal you, your health. As soon as we can organize and find the pattern, we can also find what breaks the pattern. Now, we take all this information and we combine it with all the other bio uh, markers that we find through the sensors in, an, in, an, in a smartphone. And when we combine this with knowledge that you already have about yourself, genealogical data, medical history, you have a very, very powerful uh, and updated personal health assistant in your pocket. You can even share it with your physician. Hydration. I don't want to go into an attack right now. 
The interesting thing about a personal health assistant is that, of course, it makes the, the, um, your smartphone a very, very powerful uh, medical tool. But at the same time, it's a, par a paradox. You know, it's not a cure. I think that's the first and the most important thing to say. It's not a cure. It's a way for you to manage your migraine, your disease. Uh, if you, by reading and understanding your personal output and taking action upon that, you can re reduce pain, you can reduce anxiety, you can reduce anxiousness, you can reduce depression, you can reduce the time spent with doctors, you can reduce money you spend on pharmaceuticals, you can spend more time with your loved ones and less time under a blanket. It's a tool for looking after yourself. Now, the paradox I'm, I was aiming for is this. As we recognize this to be a very powerful tool for health, the smartphone is also viled as a uh, detriment to your health. And rightfully so. There are a lot around microphones and, and smartphones that, that surely needs to be addressed and solved. But it is interesting that at the same time, your smartphone is the single, sorry, I'm going to go, the single most powerful and single most important healthcare device of the future. And that's a quite a statement right there. Now, that is good news for all you sick puppies, but it's also good news for 50% of the global inhab inhabitants. 50% of people around the world does not have access to quality health care. So quality health care can be more accessible, more personalized, through very, very simple means. Now, these solutions is not about listening in on what you're doing. It doesn't care uh, what you say, but how you feel when you say it. It doesn't care what you do, but it cares how you feel doing it. It's predict medicine. So it's not about curing migraine, it's about knowing when and why you're having an attack, which is quite powerful. So for this little startup, this simple idea that we're working on is, uh, we think, a possible uh, big, big change. And for all of you, the next time somebody asks you how you're feeling, you can be a lot more precise. You know exactly what's wrong with you. Thank you very much.